How's it going, everyone? Ben here, and today we're going to be talking about whether or not people with HIV can get the COVID-19 vaccines. Now, I know it's been a while since I made a video. It's been about two weeks since my last upload, and that's because I was finishing up my last couple of weeks of the second year of my medical school. So I just finished my last in-house exam. So right now, all I'm going to be taking for the next two months are the boards and after the boards I'll start my rotation years in medical school. So it's very it's a very exciting part in my life but I'm also very busy but I'm still going to try and upload every now and then for the betterment of you and your knowledge of medical information. So the reason why I'm making this video today is actually my uh, my partner gave me the idea for it but also the fact that I don't see a lot of media coverage on people with HIV getting the COVID-19 vaccines and the information out there is not really available of whether or not it's safe. So today we're gonna to be talking about that. We're gonna be debunking some myths. And the TLDR is if you have HIV, you should absolutely consider getting the COVID-19 vaccines. Now, all the information that I'm going to present to you in this video can be found at the CDC website on HIV populations and the COVID-19 vaccines, but also the HIV Medical Association website. So if you want a written version of everything that I'm going to spew out, definitely check out those websites. So when it comes to being an HIV patient and vulnerability to COVID-19, it really depends on whether or not you have access to HIV treatments, which is very expensive. People who have access to HIV treatments have high CD4 counts that are comparable to the general public. CD4 cells are the cells that HIV destroys, which is part of your immune system. So if you have over 500, minimum 500 CD4 counts, then you should have the same risk as everyone else in the population based on the limited data that we have on HIV and COVID-19. However, if you are diagnosed with AIDS, meaning your CD4 count is below 200, or if you are at a limited capacity of CD4 cells such as less than 500, then you are put in the immunocompromised category meaning that you may be susceptible to more infections. I'm sure as an HIV patient, most HIV patients already are informed of this. So that significantly increases your vulnerability to COVID-19, much like other people with autoimmune deficiencies. And even my sister, who has an autoimmune deficiency like lupus. Now, people with immunocompromised HIV states not only have increased susceptibility to getting COVID, but they also have in increased susceptibility to having increased risk of mortality with COVID, more severe disease. So it's kind of important for anyone with an immunocompromised state to get the vaccine. So if they do contact COVID, studies have shown people with the vaccine who contact COVID, regardless, have lower severe disease. So that's why it's very important to get the vaccine if you are immunocompromised. Another awesome thing about the COVID vaccines is that with most HIV immunocompromised patients, they're discouraged to getting live vaccines. Live vaccines mean it's a weakened version of the original pathogen that infects you and your body develops an immunity to it for, for most healthy people. But with immunocompromised people, it makes them more susceptible to actually getting sick from it, such as the nasal flu vaccine is actually a live vaccine. My sister who has lupus is actually discouraged from taking that specific vaccine because it's a live vaccine. The good thing about the COVID vaccines is that almost all the ones that are being used in the United States are not live vaccines. Both the Pfizer and Moderna vaccines are mRNA, which means it's not going to really infect you with coronavirus it only gives you a small piece of the of the virus so that you develop an immunity to it now because of limited research in the field of covid-19 vaccines and hiv there are two really important things we are still not 100% sure of when it comes to having hiv and getting the covid-19 the first one is side effects and whether or not side effects are more severe in immunocompromised or HIV patients. I will say that my sister is immunocompromised and she almost had no side effects whatsoever. That was terrible. But my very, very healthy other members of the family had more severe side effects. But there's not enough research on how, on how side effects vary among HIV 
positive patients, but you can kind of expect the same kind of side effects you would get compared to a non-HIV patient, such as soreness in the arm spot. The second dose is obviously more terrible than the first one. You might feel sick. You might get stomach aches, you know, might get feverish, might get chills, just to expect the normal course of side effects as like anyone else. We also are not completely sure of the effectiveness of the HIV vaccines with low CD4 count HIV positive patients. They may still be more susceptible than the average vaccinated person after they've been fully vaccinated because they're naturally more immunocompromised. So it's very, very important even after being vaccinated as a low CD4 count HIV positive patient to practice social distancing, keep continuing to wear masks because although the vaccines greatly diminish your chances of contacting COVID, it doesn't 100% eliminate that risk. It also doesn't completely eliminate the risk of contacting the COVID variants because we don't have enough information on that. So as a immunocompromised HIV positive patient, it's important to keep up the same CDC guidelines you've already had before you got vaccinated. Anyways, that's pretty much it for all the information I can provide to you as of right now, asterisk, because so little information is out there on HIV and the COVID-19 vaccines and HIV and COVID vaccine in general. But I hope this information is incredibly helpful to you. If you know someone with HIV who are vaccine hesitant, please encourage them to go get vaccinated for their own safety. I hope you found this informational. I hope that you got something out of it. Please share it with someone who may benefit from this information. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter to keep up with my daily life. And I'll see you on the next video. This is Ben.